Okay, so first of all, thank you for being here. You're one of the younger participants who isn't, you know, in elementary school. So I'm glad to have the, <laughs> the voices of youth here in the room. I'm, you know, the, the fact that the joint review panel conditionally approved this, you've got to look at the National Energy Board report if you haven't looked at it. It is thin. It is appalling. They, they actually ignored the fundamental things. There's a great blog on it for anyone who wants a quick read. Chris Turner, who just recently wrote the book on Harper's War on Science, wrote a blog where he said, when you're reading this report, you could almost feel the document shrug in your hands. <laughs> so like, well, there are all these things happening, yeah, but hey, we need it. So it's a very mm -hmm. thin document. Now, there's uh, other initiatives by NGOs. Uh, two groups have recently filed a court challenge saying that the National Energy Board failed in terms of its responsibility under legislation by writing such a thin document. So that's one approach. We know that First Nations will be going to court to say, look, we have a, you have a fiduciary responsibility under the Constitution of this country uh, as a federal government and as Enbridge to have had meaningful and real consultations with us. There's this little bit of a time that we have now before the federal government decides how to handle the recommendations from the National Energy Board. Now is the time to be raising hell about this. Don't wait for a plebiscite. Don't wait for the demonstration. I have so many people who are wonderful and earnest and say, I'm ready to get arrested to stop that pipeline. Don't wait for your big heroic moment. Do the boring stuff now, because now is when it's in front of cabinet to review the National Energy Board recommendations, which have conditions. So please, if you're concerned about this issue, I know it's boring stuff. Write a lot of letters to the editors of the Eastern Canadian papers where they don't get it, why we don't want this pipeline and tankers and bitumen and diluent on our coastline. As for the Dogwood Initiative idea, I haven't been asked about this publicly before, and Dogwood Initiative didn't ask my advice before they launched it, but I think it's kind of high risk. If it's a plebiscite, it's like the HST plebiscite, where it was amazing that enough British Columbians signed to force a plebiscite at a vote. But you know we, you have to have in every single writing, so the majority of British Columbians, I have no doubt, oppose uh, pipelines, two-way pipelines, Diluent, toxic diluent going Kitimat to Alberta and then bringing back bitumen mixed with diluent from Alberta to Kitimat and then putting the mixture on, on super tankers through some of the most hazardous bodies of water anywhere on the planet through the Hecate Strait. I've no doubt the majority of British Columbians oppose that concept. But can we get enough organization on the ground so that 10% of every single provincial riding in BC signs a petition and forces a plebiscite? That's what worries me. So it's a high-risk strategy. If it takes off, and if Bill Van Der Zem gets behind it, uh, <laughs> I, mean, I, I have to say that was an astonishing HST response. Yeah. But we did see from the provincial election results that parts of BC, likely the coast, are more upset about the idea of tankers on our coastline. So the geography of it, I'm mean, giving you a very candid answer. I think the Dogwood Initiative I think Dogwood is a brilliant organization. I think they do great work. So I'm, if you can sign a petition and participate, great. But don't wait for plebiscites. Do everything you can now. If we're called to show up for a day of action against Enbridge, show up. By the way, Enbridge drives me nuts because they sponsor everything. I just had to send a note to my staff that once again, I'm declining the lovely invitation to go to the Governor General's Award for the Performing Arts. I used to like to go, it's a good evening, and you get to see famous Canadians get awards, but for the last few years, it's sponsored by Enbridge. Wow. So I just can't go. I'm just waiting for the day when I turn on CPAC, it says the Parliament of Canada brought to you by Enbridge. So when <laughs> I, 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 please do stuff in the short term now, before Harper rules on this, and keep up the pressure.